What's up guys, today I'm going to go through how I edited this car edit. A lot of people ask for a tutorial on Instagram where I posted it. So I'm just going to go through the process of how I edited each video clip. It's mainly just a lot of speed ramping and then a few extra effects. So here's one of the raw video clips. I used a gimbal and just walked at a steady pace on each shot to add a bit of movement. I used POV mode quite a lot because you can get a nice rotating effect. So the first thing I like to do when editing to the music like that is add in markers on the music track. So I have these blue markers which marks the beat of the song where I either want to add a speed ramp or cut to the next shot or add a transition. They just sort of help guide you when you're editing. So this first shot, I want to reverse it because I want to do like a quick zoom out from the light. So the first thing I'm gonna do is select the video clip, go over here to the speed wheel and go to reverse clip. So now this shot, pans out from the light. So I want it to be quick all the way up to about here. So what I'm gonna do is click the video clip, hold down shift and press B to create a speed ramp, and then drag this down so it speeds up the beginning of the video clip. And then I know this marker is where I want to end the clip to transition to the next clip. And I might even slow down the end of this. And if you want to move the speed ramps at any point, you can just double click them, click edit, and then you can move where the speed ramp is. And then we also have these like tabs here, which basically smooths out the speed from fast to slow. So if we make this really short, then it will it will be really aggressive, the speed ramp. So I like to keep these nice and long. Okay, so now that I've added the speed ramp and cut it down to what I want it to be, then the next step is to stabilize the video clip. So I'm going to select it, go over here to stabilization and click stabilization. And this is normally the part that takes the longest, uh, stabilizing it and tweaking the stabilization so that it looks nice and smooth. So once the stabilization rendering has done, what I'll go and do is go to method and click smooth cam. Inertia cam sometimes works really well, but it will like distort the image a lot. So I'll click smooth cam and I don't want the scale to be affected, especially on a gimbal shot. I find the scale smooth. You just, I just normally turn that down to zero and I will mainly turn up the translation smooth and a little hack to stabilization is once it's turned all the way up to max on the slider, it only goes to 4.5, but if you click the number and drag this up, you can really like smooth the video clip up even more. So that looks pretty smooth now. I'm gonna move on to my next video clip. So I'm gonna drag my next video clip in. And for this one, I'm gonna add a speed ramp in and a speed ramp out. I'm also going to reverse this video clip. I don't know why, but I do this all the time. <laughs> I just think revealing the car from that way just looks better. So. I want the light to be the focus of this video clip. So I'm going to add a speed ramp here before the light comes into shot and also one after it. So, so one speed ramp here, hold shift, press B and then right there. And then I'll just drag these down. And then I'm going to zoom in and make sure these tabs are connected in the middle so that it smooths out the speed ramp. I'm actually going to cut the beginning of this and then maybe extend this bit. Okay, so once you're happy with the speed ramps, then I'm going to go over to stabilization again. Turn down the scale and up the translation. And that's pretty much. The process for every single video clip is just speed ramping, then stabilization. So I'm just going to go ahead and do the next few video clips before I move on to the other effects I add.
Okay, so I've added the speed ramp and stabilization to these clips, and we have something that looks like this. So I would add color grading to this next, um, but I'm not gonna go into that in this tutorial. So the next effect I would add for this style of editing would be motion blur or RSMB. Motion Blur is a free plugin that you can download from my store. I'll leave the link in the description. RSMB is a really premium plugin that you can buy. So I'll go through the Motion Blur effect first as it's a free download. I'm gonna to go to my titles, go to Motion Blur. I use Moderate Motion Blur 2. And if I was using this plugin, what I'd do is use it on all of the speed ramp parts. And you can see as I've added it on, if I turn it on and off, it gives this motion blur effect, which is going to smooth out all of the speed ramps, which helps make it look a lot smoother than it is. And if you hold down Alt and click and drag anything on the timeline, it will just copy and paste it. So it's a quick way to add things like this to the whole timeline. And I would add this motion blur when there's a speed ramp or a transition to a different video clip. So yeah, that's a really great free plugin that you could use on an edit like this. Uh, let's delete that and I'll show you the RSMB. So to add the RSMB effect, what I usually do is use an adjustment layer first from the titles tab. Adjustment layers don't come with Final Cut Pro, but I'll leave a free download link to it down below. Once I've added my adjustment layer, this means I can add one effect to the adjustment layer and it will apply it to all of my video clips below. So I'm gonna go over to my effects tab and go to this RSMB effect, revision effects, RSMB. I'm just gonna add that to my adjustment layer and then go up to the effects parameters. I usually tick use GPU acceleration and just keep the settings as they are, uh, works really well. And the good thing about this effect, you can use it across your whole video and it will just add a really nice subtle motion blur. It even makes footage that you've shot the wrong shutter speed on. It makes it look nice and cinematic and it also works really well for transitions. I'll leave a link to it down below. It is a pretty expensive plugin, but I've been using it a lot and I really like it. So if I disable this effect on and off, you can see it adds a nice motion blur effect. So I'll go ahead and render this and see what it looks like with RSMB applied. So yeah, it also gives it a nice smooth look like the motion blur. And yeah, that's pretty much it. If I go to my original timeline, so this is my original timeline and I did actually also use a skew transition. This is from a new transition pack that I released. I'll leave the link to it down below. And for the color grade, I used the cold teal and orange LUT from my Explorer LUT pack free. I'll leave a link to that in the description if you wanna check it out. And then I also boosted some of the colors and added a color curves, just a simple S curve to boost the contrast. And also hue and saturation, I turned up the reds because it was actually a really red sunset, but it, it didn't really come across on camera, but I wanted to bring back those colors. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video.